John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm so excited for this episode today because I get to introduce you guys to a brand new juicer that is now available on the market for the first time ever. And for those of you guys that have been watching some of my videos for a long time or just finding my videos for the first time, I've made over 500 videos comparing different juicers, blenders, dehydrators, vacuum blenders, and soon freeze dryers so you guys can get more fruits and vegetables in you. Fruits and vegetables, I will say, are the most important foods on the entire planet, especially the leafy green vegetables that unfortunately most people are not eating. And generally, I'd like to sell the higher end juicers, the ones that are you're going to have for your life, literally, because my life was saved in part due to juicing and making other dietary changes to eat more of these amazing fruits and vegetables in my diet. So I generally stick to selling the high end brands. That's why you generally don't see too many inexpensive juicers that we sell at discountjuicers.com because I haven't found any ones to be really solid. I mean, yeah, you could get some imported, you know, what I would consider knockoff juicers uh, from China that may have a short 90 day or maybe one year warranty if you're lucky. And hopefully it's from a company that's solid that's not going to be out of business in the next year because a lot of these companies just start importing juicers or importing any kind of widgets just to make a buck and then they disappear and then you can get no warranty support and get no juicer and basically I call them throwaway juicers so you know for me juicing is a lifestyle choice it's not about just this thing I'm gonna do now to lose weight it's something that I want to do for the rest of my life and I do do and have done for over 23 years now on a regular and consistent basis um, and, and juicing every day literally that I'm not traveling in my life, and even when I'm traveling, I, I take a juicer with me. And actually, this is gonna be my brand new travel juicer, <laughs> but we'll talk about more about that in a second. But anyway, so uh, we focus on high end machines, and I want to encourage you guys. You know, if you guys don't have a lot of money, I want to encourage you guys to save up some money, get a high end machine. There's no substitute to a good quality juicer. Oh my God, a good quality juicer could basically save you from getting gray hairs prematurely because it's just gonna work a lot better. It's gonna get a higher yield. And it's just going to be more trouble free. Um, if you are looking for a good vertical uh, juicer that's high end, check the link down below. It's a video I made actually last year, a uh, best vertical slow juicer for 2017. There have no been no major advances in this year, 2018. So that video that I made then still holds true. Those are the best three machines. And all those machines are from South Korea. South Korea makes basically the best vertical single auger machines. That's where the technology of the vertical single auger was invented. And so they make some of the best and basically after Korea, South Korea came out with them. Basically some people in uh, factories in China saw how they made it, basically just tried to copy it, but they probably didn't do all the R&D that it takes uh, you know, to get a good machine. And I've found inexpensive Chinese juicers, generally they can you know, leave a lot of pulp in the juice, they can have problems with jamming and clogging, Get, they could have a problem with like you know juice getting into the seals, blowing out the seals, blowing out the motor prematurely, and basically you have a disposable juicer that you really can't get parts for. In addition, some of the cheap, inexpensive machines may be using BPA plastics, uh, you know, in the construction of the machine, and just they're just not so durable. Oh, and of course they have a short warranty, but of course they are a cheap price, and I would of course rather you guys get some kind of juicer and be able to start juicing than to not. You know, something is always, being able to juice than not juice is always better. But now I'm glad to say here at Discount Juices we're picking up our first low cost uh, vertical single auger juicer with a reputable company to stand behind it. Actually, this is actually called the Shine uh, Vertical Juicer. And the Shine Vertical Juicer is a whole new line of products that TriVest is now going to be putting out for the like millennial customer that may not have a lot of money but he knows his health or she knows that her, their health is important to them they want to get the benefits but they're, they're not really fully vested to like sit down and invest like you know two times or even three times the cost of this machine into like a higher end machine i would of course would encourage you guys to invest in a higher end machine so you're just going to buy one something once the first time and get it right and it's literally some of the machines have a 10 year or longer warranty so you're it's guaranteed it's going to last but nonetheless, Tribest, who's now been in business over 25, maybe even 30 years now, um, you know, they are coming out with this machine as a low-cost alternative. Now, should you buy this machine instead of the Slow Star that Tribest came out with five years ago now? 
you know, I'll have an upcoming episode where I compare the Shine Vertical Slow Juicer against the Slow Star soon enough so you can see the exact specific differences. And what I will say is this, I will say that it's always best to buy the higher end machine now if you could afford it, if you could put it on your credit card, pay it off later. Of course, if you can't afford it and you want to get a good solid machine now that's going to last a good long while, uh, then you're going to want to get this machine that I'm sharing with you guys today because it's different than a lot of other inexpensive machines out there. So the Shine Vertical Juicer, it's the SJV107. I like it for a lot of reasons and once again, Tribes is... Uh, been selling the Slow Star Vertical Juicer for five years, so you know they have not come out with a low-cost version of that until now. Five years later, they've seen all the challenges that happen with their higher-end machine, right? They've seen you know some of the knockoff juicers out there. They've seen some of the problems they've had, the ones made in China. So what they did, they had a factory over in China make a good low-cost machine but incorporating some of the improvements and upgrades so that you guys don't have a problem uh, when you get this lower cost lower end machine that being said don't expect high-end machine results with a lower end juicer it's simply not going to happen anyways uh, let's go ahead and turn this box around and show you guys actually on the on the box here it says low speed yet powerful juicing so low speed 40 rpm with a powerful 200 watt motor for frustration free juicing without jamming and they've done some very special things I haven't seen on other Chinese machines before to uh, encourage that from happening. Compact footprint. This is the smallest vertical, small vertical slow juicer I've seen actually. So whether you live in an apartment in New York City or you're renting a room and you, you only have a little table in your room to juice, this is the juicer that takes up the least amount of space on a table I've ever seen. In addition, you know, the machine itself weighs about six and a half pounds. So this is now my travel juicer. It's going to go in with me when I take carry-on bags, uh, you know, on trips. So I'll have a juicer with me. Super small, super lightweight. I can now travel with the juicer really easily. Uh, let's see. Healthier juice um, comes with 100% BPA-free housing, auger, and screen to make juicing healthier and safer. So that's really important, BPA-free. Juice cap, so unlike many slow juices, it actually has a juice cap to uh, you know do mixing inside the juicer. Actually, I don't recommend you guys using the juice cap for that. I recommend using the juice cap just to prevent drips. When you do leave the juice inside the juicer to mix, it can reduce your yield. And then it says a stainless steel body. So, I mean, this has a nice upscale look, even though it's at actually a more affordable cost. Anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and open this guy up and bring out all the parts and show it to you guys. So the heart of the machine is the uh, main juicing components here. It's nice uh, dark smoke black, and that does not sound like polycarbonate to me, so that's really good. Uh, next here, we've got the motor body. This motor body is, uh, you know, nice and small, so look at that. I mean, this is probably one of the smallest juicers I've seen out there, but yet it's powerful. It has a full 200 watt motor. So they're really cool. And then uh, let's see, inside the box also, you have your collection cups. So these collection cups are a little bit smaller than most collection cups that come with vertical slow juicers. That's all right, because normally I just use a big, you know, anchor hawking eight cup glass collection cup. Anyways, in addition, you have a cleaning brush. Cleaning brushes are essential to get the screen clean after juicing. I do encourage you guys to clean the screen right after and don't let it sit around for the pulp to cake on or build up or get stuck in the screen. And finally, you get a, actually, this is interesting, <laughs> you get an apple slicer. So this actually, if you're juicing apples, you basically slice the apples with this slicer, and you can just drop the pieces inside the machine uh, quickly and easily. And then, of course, you have your instruction manual inside here. And that's pretty much <laughs> what's in the box. So, uh, you know, first thing I want to go over the manual here. So at present time, Tribest has a manual for... Uh, the juicer here and it's, it's pretty basic I mean it's just a couple pages uh, general safety regulations I mean you should read the manual before use this is probably one of the easiest juicers to use and assemble they have a list of all the parts how to assemble it I'll show you guys how to do that super simple super easy now the interesting thing to me about this machine it says continuous working time up to 10 minutes so what's what's that mean that means you should only run this machine for 10 minutes at a time to juice. You shouldn't, you know, make five gallons of juice with this machine in one fall swoop, right? 
uh, 10 minutes, you know, maybe you could make uh, maybe a quart of juice at a time, and then you're going to want to shut the machine off, let it rest for 10 minutes before you get back to juicing again, right? Uh, this is one of the disadvantages, of course, of buying an inexpensive machine, and you will find that most inexpensive machines that don't have a super, you know, powerful or, or big motor, you know, um, you know, don't have a long usage time. Even the bigger brother to this, the Slow Star Juicer by Tribest, that has a 30 minute use time or continuous use time. In addition, there's an on and off switch in reverse. It actually is uh, covered, so I kind of like that. So, uh, you know, juice won't get in there. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and then at the end it says before using. So I want you guys to make sure you read this part. Um, do not crush ice. Do not use hard or dried food. Cut fibers produce into one inch pieces. So I mean, I am glad that they actually put this instruction manual. This should be in the instruction manual of every vertical juicer. Um, there are specific techniques you guys need to use to get the best um, results when using a vertical slow juicer. I will put a link down below that I want to encourage you guys to watch called Juice Like a Pro in any vertical slow juicer, including the Shine Juicer here. So it says cut fibrous produce into one inch pieces. Actually, I would say cut fibrous produce, which includes things like celery, even if you're juicing like broccoli stems, um, kale, collard greens, Swiss chard, things like that, even bok choy. Um, I would cut them into eighth inch to quarter inch pieces for best results. I will demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, one inch pieces, maybe, you know, small enough, but the smaller the better. Uh, let's see here. Feed juicer slowly, very important. And then it has some troubleshooting tips at the end, just some really basic information in the instruction manual. Oh, and the other thing I'm going to say is that I know Tribest is currently working on um, a recipe booklet, actually, that will be coming out with the Shine Juicer. And I even hear maybe it's going to have some of my favorite recipes in there as well. So if you do get a Shine, you will also, at some point in the future, be getting a recipe book with it. Um, and that's going to be really cool. So it can help get you started on juicing some good, healthy recipes that can help you improve your health. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and show you guys how easy this is to assemble and all the different parts. So you have two bins here. The one with the handle is probably for the uh, juice catch. You could pour the juice out. And this one here is for catching the pulp. You then have the main body of the juicer. We're going to go ahead and take it apart. So here you have the pusher. And actually, I recommend actually that you guys do not use the pusher when using any vertical slow juicer. Um, the pusher should only be used to dislodge produce that is literally stuck in the feed chute. Um, if you do push each produce in like you have to do on centrifugal ejection juicers or the champion juicer, right, you will like, more than likely be pushing things in too fast into this machine, which will cause, number one, excess pulp in your juice, and number two, cause this machine to jam up. Um, basically, there's a lock and unlock um, symbol on here, so right now it's this white dot is to the lock, so we're just going to turn that to the unlock and we can take this top off. This feed chute top is pretty much like any other feed chute top. The interesting thing is if you look at the bottom of this feed chute top, the hole is actually quite large, but if you look at the top, it's actually a little bit uh, you know, smaller, so they reduce the size. I know this is to be compliant in some countries, they need to have a smaller feed chute size. That being said, you know, if it was me and I was buying this machine, it would probably avoid the warranty if you maybe took a Dremel and made this bigger. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, the next parts are pull-ins out. You have the auger. So the auger, I mean, this looks like an auger, much like on a first-generation vertical single auger machine. It just basically has a small, like, kind of cutting blade, but it's not really cutting. It's not that sharp. Then basically the produce goes in here, basically gets crushed and squeezed and the juice comes out of it. So nothing super special here, just a smaller version uh, for a smaller, more compact juicer. I do like that underneath they have a uh, basically a pocket recess in here that, uh, that acts as actually a um, pulp relief. So if pulp should build up under the auger, unlike other brands that still don't have this. It basically will lift the auger up, which will then make the machine hard to disassemble. So that's one important reason to properly cut, rotate, and slow down when juicing in one of these machines. Once again, I will encourage you guys to watch the video down below in linked in the description. Um, juice like a pro in any ver vertical slow juicer. Um, if you do all my tips in there, you will prevent that from occurring for the most part. So yeah, auger looks pretty good. Nice uh, stainless steel shaft on here. And the uh, next part we have is the juicing screen. So literally, this is the heart of any juicer. And this is pretty much looks like any other juicing screen on any vertical slow juicer, right? Uh, stainless steel screen here, 
Looks like a nice smaller hole size, so hopefully it shouldn't let too much pulp in your juice, unlike other inexpensive uh, Chinese juicers. It doesn't really have a hole in the bottom that will actually let additional pulp in your juice. And another thing that you see is missing on this machine that are on the higher end machines is actually an automatic wiping blade system. On one hand, I do like the automatic wiping blade system that goes around and literally squeegees your screen and uh, you know keeps the juice kind of flowing out, also keeps it a little bit cleaner. Um, on the other hand, you know that uh, part is an extra part to clean, so they basically just deleted it on this. And when juicing small amounts like this machine is designed for, um, you know it should be fine. I mean, if you're if you guys are doing a juice fast, you're gonna need tons of juice for like the next 30 days, right? This is not the machine I encourage you guys to get. This is the machine to get if you guys want to have like an 8 ounce, 16 ounce juice every day just in the morning before you go to work, maybe even before your coffee or even better yet, instead of your coffee to get healthier. This is totally the machine to use because number one, it's stainless steel, it'll look good on your counter. But number two, it's going to be fast and easy for you guys to use so you guys can benefit and get some of the benefits out of the fruits and vegetables in your life. All right, so looking at the screen further, um, this screen has basically two locking points where it kind of locks in um, to hold it down, which is actually number one, uh, there's a little tab here that holds it in place, and number two, uh, where the pulp comes out, it kind of holds it in place at that point. So, I mean, that's, that's decent for this. Uh, you know, most uh, higher-end machines might have five different locking points or three different locking points or more to make it more stable. Um, some of the original juicers I found that didn't have enough locking points, like they would get a little bit of motion and part of the screen would actually rub in the housing. Um, I did fit this in there and it seems pretty tight, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Another thing that's different about this is that in this machine, um, unlike some of the higher end machines, you know, all the basically the grinding parts, the, the parts that are going to basically grind up the fruit are uh, plastic. So on some of the higher end machines, they have some plastic grinding uh, blades and some are basically uh, raised up uh, stainless steel uh, from the screen. In this one, it's basically just all plastic. Is that, is that a big problem? You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think so because a lot of them on many juices are plastic, um, but I prefer to have some that are more stainless steel myself. Um, these over time may wear out, but the other thing that's really nice about this machine, unlike other machines that are made in China, is that this machine has a full three-year warranty backed up by Trivest, who's been in business for over 25 years, and all the customers I've ever sent to Trivest, based on feedback I've gotten, have gotten great service from Trivest. So I expect that from you guys too. Now the other thing about this screen that's different than other Chinese made machines that I've ever seen is uh, you know, where the pulp comes out. The pulp has to actually get ground up inside here. The juice comes out the front of the screen or the side of the screen. The pulp is all ejected out of this little small hole right there. You guys see that little small hole there? So the cool thing about this machine is that actually they, they didn't reduce the size of the machine. Some inexpensive Chinese machines, even some more expensive Chinese machines that I've recently even tested, have a small hole with like kind of blockages that aren't like a nice free-flowing design. This could cause major issues with blockages and basically cause you guys headaches in the future. Um, this is actually nice and large and I don't see any kind of major blockages occurring if you're using it properly. So this I really like a lot. So yeah, well-designed screen for a lower cost machine. Finally, we have the juicing bowl. And you know, I gotta say, I, I personally don't like that this juicing bowl is like this dark smoke uh, color. I would like to have it a little more clear so I could kind of see what's going on on the inside, but this kind of makes it look more cool. <laughs> I'm more about functionality than uh, coolness, if you guys have noticed. But uh, other than that, functionality wise, this thing kicks some royal you know what, <laughs> all right? Um, this is really a well-designed piece for being on a, such a low-end machine, right? They've done many things right on this unit, all right? Number one, they have a nice, uh, fee, uh, nice uh, juice spout here. This is nice and large, bigger than on most machines. Do you need a juice feed chute this large? No, you don't. But the thing is, when it's this large, it makes it easier for you guys to clean out some of the feed chutes. And some of the machines are so hard, you can't even get their cleaning brush in there. But this one is so large, you easily can. Another thing they've done, unlike many Chinese machines I've seen, is the spout cap. On many Chinese machines, the spout cap has a screw right in the middle of the spout cap that holds the rubber on the spout cap. Unfortunately, that, that screw at the same time is not stainless steel. So what does that mean? When you have the spout cap closed, juice gets on the spout cap on that little screw that's in the middle. It's going to rust over time. That's not cool, man. So I'm glad they've, you know, Trivest knows better to do that and they put one solid piece on there. 
on their spout cap that has a nice solid closure, okay? Number two, <laughs> what I like is that actually on the bottom of this, it's pretty much all flat. There's no major nooks and crannies that's going to be hard to clean. The pulp will easily flow out of here if you put it under your sink, blast hot water on it, brush it around with a little dish brush. It's going to clean out with no problems whatsoever. So I like that a lot. No gear in there either to break because there is no wiping blade, right? Number three, I like actually that there's a nice handle so you can grip this. Many, you know, uh, 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 juicers don't have a handle so that you can grip this when you're cleaning it easily. You just kind of got to grab it, right? Another thing I like about this is that it has that nice large pulp port, right? This makes it easy to clean out. I could literally get my pinky in there, my pinky's a little bit large, to basically push all the pulp out. So this is amazing, a lot easier to clean than other inexpensive juicers I've seen. In addition, they've done something right on this port here, right? Once again, they basically cut off the top of this port. I don't know if you guys can see that where the pulp comes out. So once again, it makes it easier to clean, plus this port is nice and tall, wide, and fat, so it easily is going to be accessible for cleaning, which is really nice because some of them um, are not. Uh, oh, in addition, they have a little flap on the bottom. It kind of blends in. I don't know if you guys can see that. If I was them, I probably would have made it a different color, but it's black. It's this little silicone flap. The silicone flap is a you know nice material here. Actually, I just pulled it off there so you guys can see it. We're going to go ahead and put it back on there. Pulls on and off easily for easy cleaning. And uh, you know, when you're cleaning it, you want to pull this flap out, and when you're juicing, you always want to have this flap in. What this flap does, this flap is the gatekeeper, right? It keeps the pulp inside the machine, and when it's fully dry, then it lets it out. If it's still kind of wet, um, it stays inside the machine. So you always want that in, and it acts as a little bit of a back pressure. So uh, I like that that's easy to come out, easy to uh, put in. And then the other major improvement that I haven't seen on other machines is actually uh, Travis has really designed this little center um, uh, gasket or bushing in here really well. A lot of the inexpensive machines I've seen, they basically will leak and that will leak uh, you know, juice down through the motor shaft, which will then get into the uh, motor housing, which will then basically ruin your motor. Even some of the high-end uh, juicers happen to me that you know the motor shaft actually leaked and actually it did ruin some of the gears in one of my high-end juicers that were in nameless um, but try this really worked on improving this and actually I like that it's actually recessed so it's nice and clean so it's not going to tend to collect all the junk and crud underneath there of course it is important not to feed things too fast and properly cut your produce and if you don't have ever, ever have a backup situation um, the juice and pulp should never get up that high in the bowl to become a problem. But if it should and you're not juicing properly, you know, this will have the least likely chance of basically getting through and leaking, making cleanup harder and shorting the life of your juicer. So, I mean, literally this has like three rings uh, on here, three levels of protection for sealing, which is actually quite impressive to me. I mean, th I mean this is just basically the, a well-designed low-end machine, all right? So uh, assembly on this guy is super simple, super easy. You're going to take this handle. There's a lock and unlock. And on the back here, there's a little built-in safety switch. If this safety switch is not engaged, the machine will not come on. I do like that this machine actually locks into place. So there's little tabs here on the bottom that you need to line up with this. So basically, you're going to put it like this. Um, we're kind of like offset. I don't know if you guys can see that. We're kind of offset. Then we're going to turn this into place so that this whole back column lines up. I don't know if you guys see that, right? It's unlined. We drop it in. We line it up. And now we can pick up the whole machine with the handle there. So super nice, super easy. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and take our juicing screen. Now, the one caveat on this is that most juicing screens and bowls have like some kind of dots to line up. Uh, I, I haven't been able to find any on this. So what you need to do is you need to take a look at this, probably this little tab here. This little tab here that actually kind of goes down, you can see it sticking out there, um, goes towards the back and there's a little hole that it goes into. So you're going to take this tab and drop it straight back in so it goes down and then this uh, screen will basically seat in there. And when I try to move it, it's pretty solid in there. Next, we're going to go ahead and take the auger. The auger just basically drops right down in the center there. And normally when I put it in, I kind of turn it a little bit to make it go down through the gasket and we're going to fully make sure that's fully seated. This is super easy assembly. Finally, we're going to go ahead and take the top and there's a little dot on the top of this and on the back of this there's a uh, padlock that's open and a closed padlock. So we're going to go ahead and take that 
um, white dot and put it to the open padlock and then close it to the closed padlock. Once you do that, the machine is fully assembled and you should be all ready to juice. If it is not fully assembled, once again, the machine will not turn on. Uh, let's see, finally you have the pusher that you should not be using. Now the cool thing I discovered about the pusher, right, don't tell anybody this, because I'll probably hide some babbles in there. <laughs> so, um, the pusher here is a two-piece pusher, which is good and bad, right? I was pulling out of the box and I basically, by accident, popped the top off. But that's a good thing, right? Check it out. Inside here, you have a, like a hiding place. You could like put like extra stacks of cash, maybe some uh, jewelry or diamonds or whatever you got in there. <laughs> and then you could put this top on and uh, make sure you like pat it all the rest of the way so it doesn't like, you can't hear things move around in there. And you could like hide stuff in there from your roommates <laughs> or your wife or your husband. <laughs> it's, it's hidden in your, in your juicing uh, pusher. <laughs> so, secret storage place uh, included, free. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty much the juicer. Oh, yeah, I want to go over. So three-year warranty, uh, less than $150, amazing. And although this may look like some other inexpensive uh, machines made in China, right? Tribes have gone through and made some significant improvements to this machine that you're not going to find in other Chinese machine, all right? Number one, it has an improved seal. I did talk about that earlier. That's where the shaft goes through the motor. They've seen this be a problem. They've, they've in my opinion, even over-designed over this, so that is, that is not a problem with this machine as it can be with lower price machines. In addition, on this machine, unlike other machines, this has a built-in cooling fan to help keep the juicer cool. Cooling fans are not expensive to add into a machine, but unfortunately, many Chinese companies are just trying to cut costs and deleting the cooling fan when they're making 10,000 machines could save them $10,000 or something crazy. Um, so putting the cooling fan in there assures that you're gonna have a longer lasting juicer because the motor is gonna stay cooler and it's not gonna overheat and so you're gonna have basically an extended service life. So that's in here as well. In addition, they've increased the motor torque on this machine despite it just being a 200 watt motor. It has increased torque over some of the other machines out there and torque is actually even more important to me than just the horsepower rating because literally when you're putting a whole carrot in there, it needs to have enough torque to snap that carrot to uh, literally squeeze out all the juice so they do have improved torque. And the other thing is I actually have seen pictures of is that many inexpensive juicers may have may skip on reduction gears right and if you guys are into physics or whatever all that stuff is you guys know mechanics and engineering you guys know how reduction gears work right it's like using a pulley system to make something easier to pull up right on a basic level so for us neophytes um, basically an extra reduction gear makes things uh, makes the, the the torque even more efficient um, more stronger I would say and try this has made these gears out of metal instead of plastic as they are on many inexpensive machines so although you are paying a less expensive price you're gonna get a higher end you know uh, less expensive juicer with a three-year warranty backed up by Trivis. so this is totally the way you guys should go if you guys want to buy an inexpensive machine especially one with a small footprint light once again six and a half pounds I could, could I carry this pick it up with one finger I can, I can pick that up with one finger. <laughs> um, easy to travel with. Anyways, uh, you know, it, this juicer sounds all good on paper, and honestly, I've never used this juicer yet. I'm going to use it right now for you guys. We're going to go ahead and get this set up, and I'm going to juice three different things, three common produce items that you guys may be wanting to juice. I'm going to be juicing uh, organic apples, organic carrots, and, of course, the organic celery. Do not forget the organic celery. If you're on the, especially the medical medium program, you want a, a juicer that's going to juice celery well, Vertical slow juicers are my favorite juicer to juice celery, so we're going to be right back at you and uh, juice all those items in the Shine Vertical Juicer. All right, so now I'm all set up and I'm ready to juice in the Shine Vertical Juicer. Really looking forward to this to see how this machine works. Uh, first, I want to go ahead and turn it on without running anything so you guys could hear how loud it is. So to me, actually, that's a pretty soft sound. It doesn't sound too loud. It runs at about 40 RPMs or revolutions per minute. The first thing we'll be juicing are apples. Now, this does not have a wide feed chute, so we're going to have to cut the apples. So what I will be using, I'm going to use their included <laughs> apple slicer. So, uh, you know, we're just going to go. Oh, and the other thing is you want to remove the stems from the apples when juicing. And uh, just push this thing down. And look at that. Slice the apple up in a little pieces and maybe just uh, push this through all the way. Let's see how this is going to work here. Pull these pieces of apples out. Alright, so 
I think what I'm going to do to make it easier is we're going to go ahead and slice all these apples up and we're going to come back at you when I got all these apples sliced. All right, we just got that last apple slice without issues with this apple slicer. Now we're going to juice them. So let's, uh, oh, I wanted to time this for you guys so you guys can see how long it takes to make one cup of juice um, in the Shine juicer here. So we're going to go ahead and get the stopwatch app out for you guys. Stopwatch all set up. We're going to go ahead and hit the start button and turn this baby on. So you want to just take one piece of apple and just drop it in the machine and let it process. And, so you, and then put in another one. I do like that actually this has a nice uh, tall uh, spout so you could actually put a nice large size uh, glass in there to catch the juice. Uh, today I happen to be putting a 16 ounce glass underneath there. I think that this would actually even hold a mason jar underneath there which would be kind of cool. If you do hear some kind of noise when it's juicing that's completely normal so do not be alarmed. As you guys can see I'm basically just putting one piece of apple in at a time. I started with approximately um, two pounds of apples, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Let's see what's going to happen. I think these apples are going in. They are juicing, no problem. Now I am juicing the apple seeds, but I did remove the apple stems. Uh, in my opinion, you know, uh, juicing apple seeds is not a problem. They say it contains cyanide in there, um, but you know, I, I believe that there's this thing called a uh, uh, trill in there that, in small amounts, it may be even uh, helpful for us. Of course, do your own research. But I personally don't have any problems um, drinking some seeds or putting apple seeds through the machine personally. Now, I am probably feeding a little bit too fast, so we want to make sure that each apple gets processed, each piece, before we put in the next one. But this looks like it's doing an amazing job. I got some nice apple juice, um, nice and brilliant in color. I want to encourage you guys also to, uh, if you're juicing apples, like juice a little bit of lemon in there. It'll make it taste like lemonade, but also it'll help prevent some of the oxidation. This juice, this juice coming out looks like a nice fine juice with a very little um, pulp in it. So this machine is doing excellent despite not having a, any kind of wiping blade. Um, let's check the pulp here. Wow, the pulp for apples is actually quite dry. I'm actually quite impressed on how well it is actually doing. I was expecting to use basically like all two pounds of the apples to get this glass full, but I don't even think I'm going to need to do that. So what that tells me that this machine is actually quite efficient uh, for what it is. So wow, and actually so far I'm like, I'm like super impressed. Now the trick with apples is you want to select hard and firm apples, most important thing, right? These are nice galas that are probably maybe uh, fresh this season. Um, if you have soft old mealy apples that if you press in, they indent. Those are not good juicing apples, maybe they're good for eating. Um, but not good for juicing. Granny Smith apples generally juice the best. If you do have softer apples in any vertical slow juicer or any slow juicer for that matter, they will tend to basically make more of an apple sauce instead of an apple juice. Look at that, man. I have a whole glass of apple juice and I have all these extra apples that I did not even need to juice, right? And so our time, it literally took, it took like about three minutes to juice um, those apples in the shine juicer to make one cup of juice. So that's amazing, right? You could literally take just a couple minutes in the morning to make a whole glass of apple juice and clean this machine is gonna be a breeze. It'll probably take me less than three minutes to clean, maybe even two and a half due to some of the less parts. Once you're done juicing, you wanna put that spout cap down and now we have one delicious glass of apple juice. My mouth is watering, I wanna drink that, but I gotta keep juicing for you guys. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and juice some celery. Normally, I would encourage you guys after juicing each item, if you're making a solid juice of like one type, uh, to clean the machine. Generally, you wouldn't juice all of one item uh, unless you're actually on a medical medium program or they want you to juice straight celery. You would be mixing things. So you could mix, a, you know, carrot apple celery juice, for example, and you'd want to put a little bit of apple, a little bit of, you know, chopped up celery like I'll show you and a little bit of carrot and just keep repeating until you're done. Once again, check the link down below if you get a vertical slow juicer or you want to watch the video, juice like a pro any vertical slow juicer, I'll go over all my tips. Anyways, next let's go ahead and juice the celery and we're going to time this from the time it takes me to prepare the celery, cut it up and then uh, juice it all. So uh, juicing celery is super simple. I do not recommend you guys put whole stalks in even in the instruction manual. They say to cut it into one inch pieces. That being said, I'm going to cut it into, I don't know, uh, eighth inch pieces is the goal, but most of the time I hit quarter inch uh, for even better. So we're going to hit start button. 
So I just got a knife, got the celery pre-washed, and we're just going to go down the line and just cut, 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 cut. It's just not take a lot of time, guys. Just pre-cut your celery right before you juice it. It's going to work a lot better than just trying to put it in a hole, plus it's going to make eating a breeze. So literally it took me, I don't know, just seconds to uh, 30 seconds to chop it, turn this machine on, open the spout cap, and we're going to drop down piece, a little bit of celery at a time, making sure not to overload the machine. As you guys can see, we got our celery juice coming out. The first little bit is going to be mixed with a little bit of apple until that runs through the machine. But I think what we're going to do for you guys is speed up the process since this is just going to be boring me feeding celery and we're going to go ahead and play some music, speed this up for you guys and uh, we'll be back at you when I got a full cup uh, and we're going to see how long it took. Alright, so we're pretty much done juicing celery and I got to say this is like a dream to juice the celery in the shine machine. Probably my one negative thing I'd like on this machine that they don't have is I'd like to feed you a little bit smaller. It's a little bit hard to get things in a smaller hole. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see a larger funnel because I was trying to put things in and sometimes things would drop out. It's not a big major deal, but I mean this is a $150 machine and I always expect the most. But look at this, we made a whole glass of celery and once again, you know, I, I got too much extra celery and let's see how long it took. I'm going to hit stop once again. It took about three minutes to juice the celery from me even having to cut the celery for 30 seconds and feed it through the juicer for it finishing. So literally about three minutes for a glass of juice. That's amazingly quick in my book. And once again, this is a slow juicer. You're going to maximize your nutrition over those high speed ejection machines that actually may be done in just 30 seconds. Anyways, I think the last thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and juice some carrots. Um, carrots have a lot of different texture. You know, apples are really soft to to juice, you know, my friend Mike Velocity, what's up Mike, if you're watching this, I mean, he, he's so strong, you know, you could like probably squeeze an apple and squeeze the juice out <laughs> of his hand, celery, you could maybe do that, but carrots, they're super hard, they can be super difficult to juice, so that's why we're going to do those last, and uh, see how the shine juicer could handle some carrots, once again, I want to time this for you guys to uh, see how long it takes, alright, so uh, I guess we're all set and ready to go, the carrots won't need cutting, so this is really cool, I uh, just hit, hit start, turn this machine on, and uh, put a carrot in. Uh-oh, a carrot barely fits in there. It's uh, all right, fit in there. And now, look, I'm putting the carrot in there. Let's see if it, like, auto-feeds in there. All right, so it might need a little bit of help kind of going in the first couple of times until we get the uh, diameter, uh, you know, smaller on the carrot. Took, a, took off a couple of chunks. All right, now we're going to drop it in and see if it auto-feeds like other vertical juicers. All right, so at that point, it finally starting to auto-feed, sucking stuff in there. As you guys can see, I've never once used a pusher during this juicing episode, and neither should you if you want all optimal results. If you take the pusher and try to cram that in there faster, then it's not going to work like I show you guys. I have very specific techniques I do to get the results I do. Oh, and I want to check out the pulp here over here. Like I did check out the pulp on the celery earlier. And to me, this pulp is like, this pulp, I mean, yeah, I could wring a little bit of juice out of it, but it's actually quite dry, especially for a low-cost machine, right? This is super impressive to me, this machine, how well it's doing for such a low price. It's probably the best low-cost machine that I've actually ever experienced myself. Now, I will say on the carrot juice, right, I am seeing the juicing screen, and maybe that's why they make the, uh, the uh, housing there smoke. I am seeing it kind of getting clogged with uh, the carrot pulp coming out. This juice is probably going to be a little bit more pulpy than some of the other juices that I've made. Um, carrots generally make a more pulpy juice. Celery generally doesn't make a too pulpy juice because all the fibers are like in the strings and the apples. If you have a mealy apple, then it's going to be uh, more, uh, more pulpy um, than not. But so far, so good. This is looking like it's working quite well. I think to save you guys some time, we're just going to go ahead and juice the rest of this, come back at you when we got a full glass. Alright, 
last carrot going in the machine. This is a little bit fatter on this one, so we're going to press that down. Kind of makes it through the top of the feed chute, which once again is a little bit smaller than the bottom. Um, at this point now, after doing like 16 ounces of carrot juice, oops, my pulp is overflowing because <laughs> we filled up my pulp catch bin. Uh, but the other thing I'm noticing is that I, I do see some um, pulp coming out with the carrot juice. Basically what's happening, and I'll show you guys this when I take it apart, is that the screen is now getting kind of, uh, you know, uh, clogged up with some pulp, and that actually pulp is actually building its way and forcing its way through the screen uh, to make it in the juice. Um, one of the things this machine does not come with, it's a budget uh, juicer, is that it doesn't come with a, a sieve. So I would encourage you guys, if you want a pulp reduce, to go out and buy an additional sieve. I find Asian markets have those generally for pretty inexpensive, and you could uh, remove the pulp if you want it. Um, I don't think pulp is a major issue, it's just kind of like a taste thing for most people. Oh, anyways, I'm yabbing too much. So, uh, juicing the carrots did take a little bit more time in the shine juicer. I'm going to say it took about five minutes total. But uh, nonetheless, uh, two pounds of uh, carrots gave us about 16 ounces of juice. So that's about average. Um, in general, the uh, vertical single auger style and other uh, single auger juicers don't get the highest yield on carrots. Even uh, you know, a centrifugal e ejection is actually more apt to getting a higher yield on hard carrots than this style machine. But that being said, this juice is a lot more nutritious than a high speed machine. If you want to get the highest extract on carrots and have high quality juice, then I would recommend one of other one of Trivest's other juicers known as the Green Star Pro. That's my favorite juicer, but that's a high end machine, you know, compared to this uh, low end. That's going to get a much higher uh, percentage of uh, juice out of the carrots and a higher quality juice. Anyways, uh, juicing carrots, no problem. In the shine juicer there, one nice glass of carrot juice. So there we go. Three glasses of juice. One shine juicer took about three minutes, three minutes, about five minutes, so 11 minutes to make 48 ounces of juice. So if you had all your produce prepped, ready to go in the machine, I'm confident that you could make between uh, 32 to 48 ounces in one 10 minute cycle, which is how much, how long you should use uh, this juicer for before you let it, sh you know, you stop it, let it rest for about 10 minutes before you start juicing again. So if you want to make a quart and drink it, turn it off, clean it, you know, put it away and then make another quart later, hey great, you could totally do that, but you don't want to make more than maybe like a quart at a time with this machine, like continuous, the motor will get warm. So after using it, the machine, you know, three minutes on, a couple minutes off, three minutes on, five minutes off, I mean the base of the machine's like barely warm, I could feel it, it's not like super hot like some Chinese machines I've used, but it is warm, so you will want to let it cool off. Now my taste buds... My mouth is watering. I've been wanting to try this juice ever since I made it. First, we're going to go ahead and try the straight apple. Mmm. Wow. It's rare that I do straight apple because normally it's mixed in this stuff. But i got to say, that is a good apple juice. I'm not feeling any kind of major pulp in there or anything. Next, let's go ahead and try that fresh celery juice I just made. I had celery juice already for morning. this, this morning. Uh, 30 ounces, but this looks even better because it wasn't stored in my fridge under vacuum. Mm. That's definitely a good celery juice. Now with the celery, unlike the apple, I do taste some small uh, celery particulate. You could filter this out. I don't think it is disagreeable to me by any means. Finally got to try that carrot juice. Oh my god, I love carrot juice. Mmm. To me, that's, that's definitely a more a rich, full-body juice with the pulp. So don't expect a pulp-free juice with a vertical juicer, any vertical juicer, um, especially if you're coming from a high-speed centrifugal ejection machine. Those ones make a pulp-free juice. This will put some pulp in there. Let me go ahead and taste that again. I mean, there's some pulp in there, no doubt. Is it a lot? Is it a little bit? You know, I would say it's uh, probably a little bit under average for a vertical juicer, for your standard vertical juicer, of course, you get, you know, um, you know, some of the higher end machines, they may put less pulp in the juice, some lower end machines may put more, but it's about average and totally acceptable to me, I mean, amazing that this mach low cost machine with three year warranty can do it. All right, now I want to show you guys actually what you have to clean when you're done. Of course, you have to clean your collection cups and all that stuff. 
and then you're going to go ahead and uh, pull this machine off, pull this apart. So we're going to take it out and on this you can see the top pretty much clean on the bottom. A little bit of pulp residue on the bottom there, not a big deal. And then we're going to go ahead and pull our arger out. Oh, and here's a tip on the cleaning actually I want to give you. Maybe I'll do it for you guys. Um, I'll do it actually real quick. You can actually pour water through here to help the cleaning process out. So let me go ahead and get some water <laughs> to do that for you. All right, so now I want to show you guys my self-cleaning tip. <laughs> so you're going to take about 24 ounces of water and what you're going to do, clean water, and you're going to go ahead and make sure your spout cap is closed, very important. You're going to go ahead and pour it in the machine and take a look at the level here. We might not even need that much for this machine. We're going to pour it up until it goes up to the top but not exceed the top. Right about there, actually, so we really didn't need, we needed about 12 ounces. And then we're going to go ahead and put the rest underneath there. That could be empty for all I care. And then we're going to turn this on and let the machine run. What you'll notice is that some pulp may start to flow back out of the machine. And now what the machine is doing is basically auto cleaning itself. So it's going to make your job a little bit easier, uh, you know, when you have to clean it. Right now it's basically circulating the water around. It's running it through the screen. It's helping push extra pulp out. Um, and it's just kind of cleaning up things just a little bit. Um, if you're really smart, what you do is you'd actually use some filtered water for this step, run that through, and then all the juice you catch that comes out is in filtered water. You can just drink that as a diluted kind of water with a little bit of uh, juice in there, which is kind of nice. I just used that uh, tap water, you know, to uh, clean the juice around in this case, in which case, actually, this will probably get watered into my vegetable garden. I don't know, once you let this run for like maybe a minute or so, 30 seconds, whatever, um, you could go ahead and open the spout cap and you can see all the water come out. So that's some of the uh, juice that you would have normally had to clean out. Sometimes I like to tip that up a little bit, and by tipping it a little bit, you'll get a little bit more of the uh, liquid out. You'll get a little bit cleaner. Go ahead and turn that off. Once again, close that spout cap to prevent drips. And now we get to take the juicer apart to show you guys actually um, what there is to clean. All right. So now it's going to be a little bit cleaner this way. And so now here's the top, there's the bottom, still got a little bit of pulp. Generally, I just basically turn the hot water on high, blast water through here, take a scrub brush, scrub this out. Super simple, super easy. Uh, next, we have the auger and the uh, juicing screen coming out. Normally, I'll pull these out in uh, one fall swoop. It's a little bit easier. And uh, this is what it looks like. Here's the auger here. If we look, the auger is pretty much clean, right? I don't see a lot of stuff underneath the auger. Very little residues underneath, so that's going to be really easy to clean. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys is, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but the auger is black, right? But if you look closely, you're like, John, there's a sheen. It looks like a girl wearing makeup. Actually, I want to find a girl that wears this color makeup that looks like, kind of like, I don't know, um, carrotish colored. But I don't know, it's kind of like a green tinge. It kind of looks like maybe like a mermaid, how they like reflect in the light. Um, don't worry if your auger has that, any auger on any vertical juicer after juicing carrots. This always happens. That's just some of the carotenoids mixing with the plastic. If you want to get this off, dish brush with some soap, some dish soap, scrub it right down right after you're done. Don't let it sit and the stain will kind of lock in place. But it's just purely cosmetic, not going to affect the function. And finally, here's the juicing screen, what you're going to have to clean. You know, uh, you can see pulp was literally extracting out of the hole. That's why the juice has some pulp in it. It just basically came out of the holes, pushed through the holes, made it into the juice, and that's what I tasted. Um, inside the screen, it's fairly easy to clean. And, and then, of course, of course, you have the juicing uh, bowl here. Let's go ahead and get some of the pulp out of this there. And, uh, you know, once again, pretty easy to clean. You see a little bit of pulp residue around the middle. That's basically where we're sitting at the bottom of the screen. I mean, this is going to be really easy to clean, too. I estimate this is going to take me under three minutes to clean easily, maybe two and a half, three minutes. The most important thing is you're going to have to scrub off the screen here. So you want to take the back end of the scrubbing tool that they came with, with a screwdriver, and basically uh, scrape down the screen first, and then go in with the, uh, the brush and just brush off the screen inside and out, set it to dry, and you're all done. The most important thing on cleaning any juicer with a screen is you want to clean it right after you're done, Took you three minutes to juice, should take you three minutes to clean. So literally in under five to six minutes, you should be ha able to have a fresh vegetable juice in the morning thanks to the Shine juicer that's compact. It's going to be easy to fit in any apartment or even your luggage on carry-on. Now TSA will want to stop you and, and make sure you have a juicer and it's not going to blow up or anything. So allow for some extra time you're taking on your carry-on. I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I want you guys to be able to rise and shine, literally, 
with your shine juicer so you guys can make your fresh medical medium celery juice or just your fresh juice on whatever program you guys are doing. Juicing is one of the most important things you guys could do to improve your health in my opinion. The shine juicer makes it affordable, easy, and more importantly, dependable, at least for the next three years while it's under warranty. This is a juicer that I would recommend if you guys are looking for a low cost machine and you really don't have the money or don't want to invest in the high end machines that will probably last much longer. You'll get a little bit better results overall, but you know, this machine, for what it is, it's super impressive. It may even beat some of the more expensive machines. So make sure you click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes where I compare this machine to some of the other machines on the market. If you guys enjoyed this video, the time it took me to make it, uh, please, please encourage me to make more videos by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Right? When you purchase from discountjuicers.com, that goes directly to support me to put food on my table, the, the same food that actually made this the, the juice for you guys today so that I could drink juice, eat healthier, pay my electricity bill, all that good stuff. So I appreciate it, you guys if you guys support me. I do have a price match policy where I will price match any other authorized retailer of any product we sell um, so that you could still support me and uh, even if, if you're paying you know five dollars less but I would encourage you guys to pay the full price with me so I can continue to do my work on making all these educational videos on YouTube for you guys so I'd, I would appreciate if you guys think I helped you out and hey help me out it doesn't cost you anything extra um, so uh, also be sure to uh, like this video if you like this video if you want more videos with the shine juicer with more affordable products I hope shine products you know division of Tribest will be coming out with more you know uh, cost effective machines that perform quite well with good long warranties so I'm looking forward to those um, yeah, I'll do more if you thumbs me up. Also, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click that little bell, too, so you get notified of my new and upcoming episodes. I'm coming out about every five to seven days in order to war I'll show up. Or what juicer, dehydrator, or even freeze dryer I'll be comparing. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. If you guys are looking for a juicer, I have more videos on comparing juicers, helping you guys select the right juicer, how to use a juicer properly, and even how to store your juice so it lasts for up to a week in your fridge. Um, than anybody else online, my past videos are a wealth of knowledge, so be sure to do your research before, before buying a juicer so that you guys get the right one for you. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.